Hi, I'm Peter Birch, and with my friend Brian here today, we're going to be checking out some of Australia's coolest animals. You're watching Critter Cam. We're checking out some koalas today. These guys are very cool looking. And in fact, whoa, look at that. They spring from tree to tree. This week's question of the week. How many marsupials does Australia have? Is it 159, 254, or 358? Please leave a comment below. In fact, it's said that if a koala wants to greet you, they'll touch your nose with their nose. Let's see if this guy wants to say hello. Hello, buddy. Awesome. And in fact, they're not a koala bear, as most people think. These guys are what we call marsupials. Marsupials actually have pouches. With the koalas, the pouch actually folds the opposite way. <laughs> Look at this guy here, he's having a bit of a chill. It's that time of the day in the afternoon, he's having some afternoon snacks. And in fact, most of the time, koalas are very, very laid back. It's simply because from the food that they're eating is very low, very low in nutrition. So therefore, these guys spend a lot of time sitting around, slowly metabolizing the food. And this guy over the back here, he's, a, he's just having a bit of a scratch there. Look at him scratch away. And in fact, the most favorite part of their food is the very tip of the gum leaves. The most nutritious part. The eucalyptus leaves are actually quite toxic. It's quite fascinating to find that these animals can devour these leaves. And in fact, these guys will eat up to half a kilo of eucalyptus leaves in a day. If we take a close look at the claws, we can see how very well adapted they are to climbing. And in fact, these guys have got two sets of thumbs on each hand. That's pretty amazing right there. Koala's biggest threats are humans. Habitat destruction has caused massive population destruction for these poor guys, along with the fact we bring cats and dogs in motor vehicles. This relates to most of the deaths of these poor guys. This is a redneck wallaby. As you can see, he's got this beautiful red colour on his neck. And in fact, Australia is very unique to having these kangaroo and wallaby species. You've got these small front arms, basically almost useless. And these very long, powerful, strong back legs. And the tail, the tail itself can act like a third leg at times, help, helping them to stand up and fight with the males. They can use that for combat. They're very friendly creatures indeed. He loves his treats, this guy, his name's Scratch. Ain't you, buddy? They call baby kangaroos and wallabies joeys. And we're lucky enough, we've got a little one right here. This little girl here is nine months old. Even at this side, in this age, they're quite independent. You want some more, buddy? Get that in here. Spending most of their time in the mother's pouch, sitting in there. And as they grow bigger, they'll stick their heads out of the pouch and start to graze, just like the adults. <laughs> Redneck wallabies are found in coastal shrublands and dry sclerophyll forest throughout coastal and highland eastern Australia. Redneck wallabies are mainly solitary animals, but will gather together when there's an abundance of resources such as food, water or shelter. When they do gather in groups, they have a social hierarchy similar to other wallaby species. Wallaroos are considered to be a mid-sized macropod, with the wallabies being the smallest and the kangaroos being the largest. Wallaroos rest by day and become active at dusk, grazing mainly on grasses and some shrubs. They are well adapted and even breed successfully on pastures of low protein content and can survive without frequent access to water as long as they can refuge from the sun. Unlike other macropod families, the wallaroos can mainly be solitary animals and often can be seen in large groups grazing together.
Wallaroos are abundant all through Australia, except for the far north tropical forests and the forests of Tasmania in the south. This, believe it or not, is a female, an adult female, red kangaroo. She doesn't look very red and she doesn't look very big. And in fact, the name comes from the males. The males are almost three times this size and very brightly coloured as well. Now, believe it or not, just like all kangaroos, they live in family groups. And these red kangaroos, in fact, inhabit most of central Australia. They're quite friendly creatures. And believe it or not, it's said that the adult males can jump nearly eight foot in height, which is pretty spectacular. Now, how do we know that these aren't just eastern grey kangaroos? Well, the tip of the tail. The tip of the tail doesn't have that black marking, which is very distinctive of the eastern greys. They are absolutely spectacularly beautiful little creatures and very friendly and inquisitive too. Maybe it's my smell, but I don't think the other guy liked me very much. Hey buddy, this is the great eastern red kangaroo and this is a beautiful example of a mature male. Typically called Boomer, but this guy's name is Ned. And how scary and horrible are these animals? Well, he's not scary at all, are you Ned? Oh, look at him. He's like a big baby. You can sit here and give him a good cuddle. He loves a good scratch. These animals are absolutely beautiful creatures, such powerful animals. Believe it or not, they'll actually sit up on their legs, lean back onto their tails in a defensive posture, which typically what they do when two males are combating. And then they kick with their feet, pushing the other males away. This is a beautiful little joey. That's what they call baby kangaroos. He's around about 12 months of age. He's still at the moment quite dependent on his mother. Now believe it or not, these guys hang around their mum for about a year to 18 months. The first six months they spend inside the pouch and the mother obviously takes very good care of him. Now believe it or not, kangaroos, like I said before, live in family groups, which is better known as mobs. The eastern grey kangaroos, and believe it or not, this one here is actually licking its forearm. Because when the forearm's wet and the wind blows against it, it actually helps to cool the animal down. It's a pretty ingenious thing. How do we know that these are eastern grey kangaroos? Well, when we discussed it before, the black tip of the tail and the fact that these guys are a lot smaller. Aren't they just spectacular animals? I mean, kangaroos are just really friendly little creatures. Absolutely amazing. Hey, how you going? Now, believe it or not, these are adult eastern greys. They don't grow very big compared to the reds. And like I said before, they're quite friendly and inquisitive. They're coming over to have a look, see what's going on and why I'm sitting here. Don't you think they're pretty cool too? Someone's rung the dinner bell. <laughs> this week's question of the week. How many marsupials does Australia have? If you answered A, 159, you're correct. Good job. Hope you've enjoyed today's show with some of Australia's unique animals. Put a comment below, hit me up on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching Critter Cam.